I was fortunate enough to be able to observe the tamale making tradition at Christmas time in the Olga and Sam Navarro family. This took place in 2001. The first step is the washing of the, the corn husks. And Olga said that uh, that's a job they often give to the children in the family because it's e the easiest thing to do. Unlike her own family, where she grew up, she was not allowed to participate. She could only observe her mom and her aunt making tamales at their home in San Antonio, Texas. We're seeing the big steamers. Usually they only did three dozen at a time, which took approximately 45 minutes to an hour. In her mother's situation, her mother made 30 to 40 dozen, whereas Olga generally made just 10 dozen. And you'll notice the wine glass there, that's to help the person at the steamer. But when her mother and aunt were making it, first they would take coffee breaks, and then later they would switch to beer. In this family, they used wine as their reward for the hard work. Uh, this gentleman is... Mr. Flores, and I can't tell whether or not, oh, there's the father of Mr. Flores. That's the in-law of one of Olga and Sam's daughters. They have three daughters, Ursula, Gigi, and Nini, which is short for Olga. So she's little Olga. All three daughters are married, and they all participated in this. This was a truly extended family experience. You can see some of the ingredients there, especially a wine bottle, <laughs> and uh, the cornmeal. With the cornmeal, they make the masa, whereas Olga's mom made the masa from scratch nowadays. Mexican-American families can buy the masa already prepared, and then they add their own personal touches to it. They add the lard and they add the seasonings. Here are all the ingredients that get added to the masa. You can see the lard, the baking soda, and the baking powder. They're adding the lard to the masa in this picture. And then they knead it by hand till it's of the right consistency to be spread on the ojas or the leaves of the corn, corn husk, what they call leaves or the corn husks actually. More pictures of Mr. Flores. It's, it's a, a hard job to do. There you can see they've added some sauce to it, give it flavoring, even though the filling will be highly seasoned. But here is a stack of hojas that are filled, and there's the consistency of the, of the masa that's ready now to be spread on the leaves. There's a picture of Olga. She's mixing the meat mixture. Uh, it's interesting to note the differences in time. For example, when her mother made the meat mixture, her mother would boil or roast a pig's head and then take the meat from that. Olga instead buys a pork roast and a beef roast and cooks it and then mixes the two meats together. But now change has hit the family because one of her granddaughters is now a vegetarian. So they're moving away from the meat and they're starting to make them of beans. There's uh, Ursula, one of the daughters, um, who's spreading the meat mixture. First you put on a, 
uh, a coating of the masa, the cornmeal with the extra ingredients. And then she's adding the meat mixture, which is highly seasoned. And as I said before, it's a mixture of both beef and pork with seasoning. That's a really good picture of, you can see three people. I have a feeling that one of them is Sam, Olga's husband. So it's an assembly line production. And on this date uh, that where I witnessed the event, they had two tables full of participants and it was all extended family. That is one of the sons-in-law. I think it's uh, Ursula's husband, I believe. Last name is Flores. Ursula has now taken on the mantle uh, from Olga. When o these pictures were taken, Olga was 61. Now she's 77 and she said it's just too much work that she can't do it anymore. So she offered to supervise Ursula when she made them this past year in 2016. And it was very cute because Olga said she had Ursula had invited her friends, and they were gringas, but they all did a great job, and, and they all enjoyed the process. There's Ursula showing off <laughs> the meat mixture, and there's Olga. She must have known I was taking a picture. There, there's the extended family, and I'm part of the extended family. Gigi, uh, one of the daughters in the maroon sweater, is married to my nephew. And this shows one of the granddaughters participating. And I believe she's the one who eventually became the vegetarian. <laughs> so life, life makes changes. Their tradition alters to fit the new, the new generations. That's Gigi, that's Olga with Ursula. And Ursula looking a little self-conscious. <laughs> Gigi is one of the three daughters and it's doubtful that she will continue the tradition. And um, I'm, I'm curious to know if I could project forward quite a few generations as to what will happen to this tamale making tradition. For example, the other day I was in a restaurant and this man stopped at my table and he said his wife used to make tamales. And they were, I'd say in their like 50s, 60s, early 60s. And I said, why is that? He said, it's just too much work. And so I hope this doesn't happen, but it may be that all parts of the tradition will be affected by technology and a lack of time. And maybe you just buy them ready-made because it's a lot easier. But by doing that, you lose the effect of having a family tradition where everyone gathers for a common experience. More pictures of extended family, the granddaughter, her mom. And there they're getting putting uh, the tamales in a roasting pan and uh, I believe they're getting stacked and ready to put into the into the steamers. Oh, that's a good shot of progress has been made. Uh, you can see one container of meat mixture has already been finished, and uh, the other one has still more to go. But you can notice also the wine glasses are out now. And um, I can't. And it looks like there's more leaves there that need filling. This is the way they fold them, and there they are stacked. And there's Ursula with her husband, Mr. Flores. I come from California, and tamales were always. It was always a part of my tradition. Oh, here, I'll continue the story, but here's a good shot of the assembly line production team. 
But as I was saying, in California, we were very used to eating tamales. Uh, Mexican food has always been a staple of the California diet. Now that I live in uh, New Mexico, of course, New Mexico is being real close to the border, especially here in Las Cruces. And um, so it's, it's, it's a staple for us here. However, I recently spoke to someone who was newly uh, transported here from the Midwest. I think he lived in Kansas. And he told me he had heard a lot about tamales. And when he first got here, he wanted to try them. And he went to a local restaurant. And to everyone's amazement and amusement, he tried eating the hojas, the, the leaves of the corn. And um, they all laughed at him. He felt very embarrassed. <laughs> But he he was willing to let me share that story uh, with you, you viewers. When I told Olga about it, she said that she has uh, new neighbors from Maine, and she sent over some tamales for them as sort of a welcoming gift. And um, the l woman called up after a while and said, how do I prepare these? It's just something that we take for granted here in the Southwest but other parts of the country, they're not familiar with this eating tradition at all. Again, here is another shot of the assembly line uh, going on. Everybody's smiling, and we had a really good time. I participated as well, especially in the eating. <laughs> and they were delicious, because the, and Olga sent home tamales uh, with everyone. Oh, that's my nephew, David, and uh, he's participating. <laughs> I don't know what that look is supposed to mean, but it was funny. But he was, he enjoyed it as well. I don't think he and um, Gigi will continue the uh, tradition, uh, but the other daughters uh, definitely will and are doing so right now. There's a platter full of... Uh, filled tamales ready to go into the steamer. There's the daughter that we call Nini, but her she's really Olga. She's getting ready. They're all folded and ready to go. Now you're seeing kind of the dregs of uh, some of the ingredients. Uh, on that day, we made chiles. I think they were just Ortega chiles from the from a can. I'm not sure. Uh, some with chilies and cheese, others with a meat mixture, and then even ones that were filled with it, like a chopped chicken mixture. There's Nini. There you can see how they're folded. They, do, they just do one fold. They roll them up and then they just fold them up at the bottom. And when they put them in the steamer, they steam them upright. That's Sam next to them. That's, I think, a friend's daughter. I think her name is Jamie. As Olga said, the only blonde in the group. <laughs> Oh, there you can see the chiles. Oh, I don't think they're from a can. Again, the assembly line. Everybody's very busy. There you can see this stack. I think, oh, there's, you know, we're getting down to the bottom right now. And see, the masa is almost gone. Now the sampling begins. And of course, they were wonderful. Anything that comes straight from the cooking utensil and is still warm is fantastic. There's more of those big steamers. And now we're coming to the end of the of the process, and Olga is tasting, tasting, and also having her little glass of wine. Somebody's uh, proposing a toast to Olga for all her hard work. And thank you, Olga, for allowing me into your home to witness this wonderful tradition of tamale making at Christmas time. Mm -hmm.